Huh? Oh, hey. Hey! Hey! It's me, Meta. Hello. Hello. Guess what game I'm gonna play. And we got Narcissistic Parents Behaviors That Cause Deep-Rooted Loneliness by Jerry Wise Audio. So let's check this out. And I'm gonna build and play my game. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. Hey, hi, everybody. I want to talk about how being an adult child of a narcissist and the behavior that we have experienced growing up turns into painful loneliness as a child and as an adult and give you some pointers and resources about dealing with that. First of all, an adult child or a child of a narcissist, of course, lacks emotional support. That's bedrock. This is going to be distracting. I can't, uh, hmm. I guess that's bedrock. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Narcissists are not supportive. Why are they not supportive? Because they're thinking about themselves. They're assholes. And they may be abusive. They may be mean, critical, moody. Uh, thinking of their image, all of those things, which makes for nurturance, uh, just not happen. And so as a result, we grow up, the children grow up with a very little self-esteem and have very little emotional resilience. We're not very resilient when we come to, I didn't say we weren't strong. I'm just saying emotionally resilient. And there's a difference. I think ACONs are very strong people. Um, they just struggle with what happens on the from the neck on down, the inside of them. And also, we uh, are concerned about having had created in us as a result of this lack of emotional support, unworthiness. Well, if you add a lack of emotional resilience, an unhealthy sense of self, and unworthiness, that's going to make for quite a bit of loneliness for us as children and as adults. Second of all, invisibility and neglect. In narcissistic families, children are invisible and neglected. There may be golden children, there may be mascots, there may be unseen or invisible kids, uh, lost child. There are all kinds of roles, of course, in narcissistic families. But there is still invisibility and neglect. Yeah, I, I used to be able to turn invisible when I was little. I mean, you might not have believed me because, well, but trust me, I was invisible. For the inner real child, the inner real person, they're treated as they are a role. Pretty much. And so we don't get that very strong being seen and also being nurtured. And what happens? We become invisible well, and unimportant. I couldn't actually be seen because I was bending the light and I was actually invisible. <laughs> then what happens? We Happen. feel alone. Yeah. Number three is emotional manipulation. If you are being emotionally manipulated, which so often narcissists will do to everyone in the family, because everyone must behave in a certain way, to be accepted or at least conditionally accepted by the narcissist and i do use the word conditionally because it can always be pulled at any moment mm -hmm. and it's not based on the relationship it's based on performance yep. so it's not i accept you because i love you i accept you because you're doing what i want you to do right now right and you're behaving the way i want you to behave yep fair weather for me now i will give you a little acceptance so, with this emotional manipulation, we end up having lots of self-doubt. And if you have self-doubt, a lot of self-doubt, and I remember having tons of self-doubt, how are you going to connect with other people? How are you not going to feel lonely? And mm -hmm. I remember so many times, even when I was in a position of leadership, and people were wanting to be friends with me or wanting to be close with me, I couldn't do it because I had too much self-doubt and I had to keep that image going and that just that self-doubt just keeps me locked up in a prison of loneliness. 
a glass, a glass case of emotion. Okay, that's wonderful. Get the fuck off my screen, dude. Fuck. Turn to fucking YouTube. Turn to YouTube over here. Also have a problem with lack of boundaries. Boundaries are just trampled on. Boundaries are not taught. Yep. Boundaries are not respected. And so, if we don't have that going on in the family, guess what I'm going to feel as a kid? Idiot. Autonomy isn't going to be taught. Yep. And individuality isn't going to be taught. And hmm. self-differentiation isn't going to be taught or valued. None of these things are going to be valued. And when you don't have autonomy, individuality, or some self-differentiation, you may have a lot of people around you. You may have an audience. You may have some friendships. But oftentimes, we still have a profound loneliness. Mm -hmm. One of the things I want to stop here and mention real quick, down in the description below, check out the online program, Your New Road to Self. That's a program I have available for you, and there are some perks that go along with that. Um, Building okay. yourself, you were never because... painful. I don't know if you remember. Phyllis Diller, if some, uh, some of you are my age, you might remember who she is. I'm not she your age. She's a comedian, <laughs> and uh, she also was a concert pianist. And I want a position to be able to be an opening act for her when she performed. There were a lot of people there. She was pretty well known at the time. She had had her own TV show and things like that. Again, God I wasn't a celebrity. Sweet. She was. And I remember sitting up in the audience with her mother. And I didn't know it was her mother, but her mother was mouthing all of her jokes with her. How does she know all these things? And then found out it was her mother. And even in the midst of all of that sort of celebrity, feeling very lonely, feeling very isolated, that even with all of those good vibes, I couldn't kick this feeling of loneliness, when it should have been a great day of success and joy, and, and I was able to uh, sing and perform and such before a uh, celebrity did come on. And so, again, being in a large position, large crowd, having lots of people doesn't mean you're not going to feel lonely. Loneliness is that ache that we feel. Crazy. Another another Oliver Tree reference. Alone in a crowd, right? About not being connected to other people in a real way. And a lack of boundaries growing up, again, destroys that autonomy, individuality, and self-differentiation. Number five, role reversal. So many times in narcissistic homes, there are role reversals where the child becomes the caretaker. Yep. The child gets parentified. What's going to happen if you become a parentified or caretaking child? Does that set you up for having age-appropriate friendships and relationships? No. It, it harms that is actually what it does and so we may have trouble developing relationships that are age appropriate with peers and connecting with others on a deeper level because we're spending all this time being an adult for an adult and so again loneliness occurs we haven't we're not able free to have those kind of relationships number six fear of abandonment Narcissistic parents may actively discourage or undermine their children's relationships. In other words, if you go off and go have good relationships with other kids or your aunt or your cousins, then I feel jealous and then there's a fear of abandonment. I may withdraw from you to get you back in line. And so I'm pulling you by our fear of abandonment to not make those connections and soothe that loneliness. And so we end up being reluctant to express our feelings and to seek connections. I don't know how many adults, including myself, I remember doing a whole workshop on friendship for singles, just doing friendship. And I realized how much I didn't know about relationships. And just having friendships, not even a partner, not even a wow for a spouse, a lot of information out there like on that. But how do you be a friend? Uh, how do you do that? 
I didn't know. I don't know. How do and you do that? To learn more about that? How do you so even I do that? Do you have to do something? People. But it was very painful. <laughs> and the loneliness is very painful. What's step one? Seven. Isolation from supportive relationships. If you're in a narcissistic family, have narcissistic parents, then they're going to want to keep you close to the nest. Don't be uh, getting into a relationship. In other words, narcissistic parents do not like to share influence. I don't know about all that. So, I mean, for me, they don't yeah. want you to form those relationships with maybe healthier extended family members. I never experienced or that. Neighbors or friends, uh, schoolmates. And they will even, you know, kind of threaten, not even necessarily in words, but you'll notice they'll start to, to withdraw from you if you do that. They'll often discourage, you know, well, they're not our family. They don't understand us. Uh, they're bad people when really they're not bad people. But to the narcissist, they're bad people because they would expose the narcissist. So then they're bad. I've even known of people where when the kids started getting, they were going to a church. When the kids started getting close to other kids and the pastor, and it was such a positive influence, the family left mm. because the narcissistic parents could not deal with that. They needed to keep their children isolated, and this wasn't an isolated type of church. Deep sleep. And they would just go uh, because oh, they okay. can't have that. Hold on a second with this um, Minecraft moment. So you get the deep slate, when you break it, it turns into cobbled, right? I didn't think of this. Let's see, cobbled deep slate, and we got deep slate. Some silk touch. Yeah, gives you deep slate. Okay. Hmm. Well, little goofy with uh, this texture pack here, but oh, they're very different than this. Wow, very cool. Yeah, man. So, hmm. What do you build with deep slate then? I didn't even mess around with that yet. I have to focus on each individual new item and block one at a time and get to know them all still. Mm -mm. I have to figure out this is obviously a little storage room figure out some kind of design it's going to be something like this I gotta play around with the uh, deep slate. I gotta see what it looks like in vanilla uh, texture. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Man, this screen screen is getting worse. All right, I'll put back on the dude here in a minute. I'm just like playing the game, dude. Yeah, we're gonna do something like that, and then I'll have uh, a label right here maybe a label you know item frame and then mm, yeah I like to write it down in a sign too just visually and to see it it's just quicker to process it in your brain it saves time you only have a certain amount of seconds to be alive <laughs> make it count <laughs> maximize efficiency spawn rate of your brain hole 
What did I put in here? I'm just gonna throw this in here. I hate when there's just a brain hole on the wall. I hate that brain hole. <laughs> I only put on this homie again. Let's see what happens. Eight. Internalization of narcissistic traits. Children raised in narcissistic families might internalize some of the narcissistic behaviors and attitudes that they witness because it's just so modeled in that way. This can lead to difficulties in forming genuine, you know, fulfilling relationships as these traits can hinder, you know, emotional intimacy. Let's say they're a child of a narcissist, but they're an adult, they're in a relationship, but because of what they saw and believed and were taught, they're going, I'm the head of the house, I'm the man, and you need to be submissive to me because that's what the Bible says. Hmm. Does that hurt intimacy? And again, we can talk about the whole theology of that whole, and I'm not really here to you talk about all the verses and the, I'm just saying how the Bible is used. I don't know. The, I don't know about all that, homie. But this, uh, well, the hoppers are covered up, so they're not going to create lag, right? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. I'll just save them. I'll just do this. I don't need to use all that. All that. It doesn't have to be fast. There probably will come a time where I'm like, damn it, I wish I kept all the hoppers. <laughs> I'm just gonna, you know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to collect a bunch of deep slate and uh, put it back in the uh... oh that looks awesome is that gravel? I'm going to put it back in the vanilla texture and we could mess around with uh, deep slate and all the stuff so is that what that is? let's see man shit is all full again No, I didn't want to put that in there. It's a pain in the ass. I just don't want the game to freeze. The fucking game wants to freeze every time you open up a chest. Cobble deep slate and then I'll have a... I guess I could make a chest of just deep slate. I don't know. It's not going to be that common here. I like to put my blocks in the beginning... Because all this shit is going to be bones and arrows and uh, armor and fucking bows. Yeah, bones and bows and arrows and uh, shit. All this stuff. It's going to crash probably. Okay. Like that shit. No, all this shit. Got a lot of chain now. I like it when it was more rare, to be honest. It's really cool to have a shit ton of fucking chainmail, like, real easily. It's almost on, de well, it is, it's like on demand now. Kind of ruined it, Mojang. It's everywhere. You can always get chainmail now. No problem. It used to be super rare. Way more rare. Whatever. Good job, Mojang. You professional ruiner of everything. I'm telling you, dude. Changed my mind. So, what's this guy talking about, dude? Bible can be quoted by anybody, and I believe from my pastoral training, even from Satan, even by Satan himself. So, the Bible can be quoted for any number of things. Yeah. But we're in that narcissistic learned behavior, then they use that as kind of a, but it's about me. So you need to be submissive, wife, because I'm the head of the house. That's kind of a narcissistic kind of use of the Bible. Mm. Uh, because they saw that growing up. 
Whereas after they have more recovery, then that's not as much of an issue for them. Number nine, narcissists demand the spotlight yep. from children. Oh, what does children? that do? When the narcissist demands to be in the spotlight from their children, huh. then the children don't learn to self-soothe. And if you don't know how to self-soothe, guess what's going to happen? You're going to feel a lot of loneliness hmm. if you cannot self-soothe. Soothe. Narcissistic parents or families don't teach kids how to self-soothe. How do you soothe That's yourself? That's just not a part of the, the fuck is the he talking? What is he talking and about? if you don't learn how to self-soothe. Soothe. And I think this is where a lot of times. So, like, what do you do? I don't know how to do that. Even like toddlers. I, I don't think I learned how to do that because I don't even fucking know what that means. What do you do? You, you pat yourself on the back? There, there, buddy. Oh, this is very soothing. I don't understand. You pour water on your head? Like, what is well, that? You do it for infants. There are times... You fucking rub aloe all over your ass? Healthily. What do you do? We may let them cry a little bit. Cry? So they can learn some self-soothing. Don't you so know? I'm not Throat? jumping in there and being a helicopter parent. Helicopter. Um, the same is true for a toddler. Yeah. Sometimes toddlers need to just be upset. Sometimes. Until they can decide to soothe themselves. Until they become a helicopter. And go, oh, well, I'm I'm now no longer upset. Mom and dad have left me with this sitter. Mom and dad are I helicopters. Truck I'm going to go play with. <laughs> and we must learn what is it? We grow up. What is it, bruh? Need to just be upset uh -huh. until they can decide to soothe themselves. How? And go, oh, well, I'm I'm now no longer upset. Mom and dad have left me with this sitter. What? I see this truck I'm going to go play with. I see a truck? That's that, what? Self-soothing. Self-soothing? See a truck? And then you're going to go play with the truck. So I just have to go get me like a Tonka truck. And have it laying around. And then when I have to self-soothe myself. <laughs> fucking look at the truck. Look at that truck. That's pretty soothing, bro. Go play with it. Okay. I think he's on to something here. And we must learn that as we grow up. Yes, we must learn how to see trucks and play with them as we grow up. Because it's going to make us healthier when we get older. Absolutely. I've seen trucks and played with them so many times. I'm pretty healthy. And again, I'm not saying don't nurture kids, don't take care of kids. I, I'm not saying that at all. Just let them be but helicopters. I'm saying be careful about the swing of the helicopter. pendulum. And being, a, oh. you know, that... Uh, a parent who Helicopter. never lets their child cry, yeah. ever, about anything. Yeah. A parent who who always is extremely soothing. Anti-gravity parents. You know, if you're extremely anything, it's probably problematic. Yeah. Because life is about balance. Yeah. That's what true life and human existence is about. Helicopters about can balance, balance in healthy. the air. Just like in how the body functions. If the no, body function... The helicopters have balancing mechanisms. Functioning. The labs, the... You know, I've just had some medical things, that, uh, you know, labs and things. Medical helicopter. <laughs> if they're extreme, then we got some problems. Too low, too okay. high. You know, we want it in the normal range. Yeah. And that's, and that's what we want in our relationships.